Alright, welcome to episode 3 of Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt, and uh, we continue to make some progress. Uh, we had a pretty fun last uh, episode. Uh, we're getting ready to kill a griffin, uh, but before we kill the griffin, we're going to do some side quests first and explore a little bit more of the land around us. We're not ready to, you know, advance that main plot quite yet, because it really probably just a little bit of a reason now to, to look at some of these other things. So this this actually episode I'm going to start off with the Gwent uh, card game and we're just going to make this episode uh, about that and then we'll, it won't might not be that long we'll see how it goes. I've played it uh, some and I've looked uh, at some other videos of people explaining it so I'm going to do my best. Um, I can start this uh, card game by uh, going here to the Scholar. Now Ah, He'll give us a little bit of info here. Okay, so we say we can play. Now, I'll tell you right now, I don't, I've don't. i not really fallen in love with this mini-game, card game. It's a full-fledged card uh, game, kind of uh, on the lines of, I guess you could say, a, a, a Magic the Gathering kind of style, but, you know, not. I mean, it's definitely a, a, a dual card game, but... Best Let's thing to do is just to see it. Yours. Watch it. Explain the rules first, though. With pleasure. They're as simple as falling off a log. So he doesn't really explain it. We have to read it here. So they say it's an ancient dwarven game, simulates a clash of two armies. So we get to go first. And there's always um, 10 cards that you draw from a deck of, I think it's 22. It can be more. I think you. You get to kind of size the deck the way you want, but if you start getting too many cards in it, then you're not going to pick the ten best. So there's a, a trick there to not uh, having too many unnecessary cards. So now, um, you never get any more cards than this. And they're showing here that the very top left corner is our unit strength. The second icon there is the row that the card's going to go in. And finally, any special abilities um, are right there. In this case, it's a morale boost. And the weather cards actually then affect a given row you're in. And we'll see that as we go. Now, um, at the start of each game, we get to draw two cards. And so now they're showing the battlefield here, the top and the bottom. And um, each turn, we're going to place a card, like most card games, uh, we, we alternate taking turns. There's also a leadership card that we can play at any one time. Okay, so now they're kind of getting out of the tutorial, and we can actually play this game. And I, I didn't want to just skip past the tutorial, I wanted you to see how it looked and, and read through it if you wanted, but... What uh, is going to happen is if I pick, say, this guy, he's going to go into the slot up here that I've highlighted because he's a close range melee unit. If I go here, this is a uh, ranged unit, and then finally you have siege units as well. So their icon in the lower right tells what row they're going to end up. And really what this matters, which row they go in, it, uh, really is primarily impacted by these um, environment cards. You can cancel out rows and make them weak. So um, one of the tricks of this game is it's a three round game. You have to win two out of three rounds, but you only get these ten cards. So some of the strategy is knowing when to cut and run, especially in that first round, because you might want to let that round go to them because if you use up all your cards you got two more rounds that you got to get through and that's the ultimate strategy in this game so let's go ahead and start with um, we know that we could have a kind of a strong back row because um, we got a six siege unit here and we can also have we have pretty good strong cards across the board we have good strong cards but we want to kind of lead off with the weaker one so we'll just lead off with the very kind of weakest card we got so we're gonna see um, what card the player throws in so it's gonna add up the strength in each of these rows into a final column uh, a final total and the player at the end of the round with the highest total wins so um, at any point we can pass and when we pass 
then um, then that's it. And as it says here at the bottom, if you read it, it says you should pass when you're confident you can win with the units you already have in play, or let your opponent win and save your cards for the next round. So say he gets away ahead of himself and he's put down some really really valuable card, like I can just skip you know if, if he's overextended and let him win that round knowing that he's given up his best cards and I've got stronger cards so once everything's over all the cards are gonna get dismissed and it'll get set to zero so I think we're ready to kind of let it play now there probably won't be too many more tutorials interrupting this so now he's played another um, you know uh, melee unit against me so he's a little stronger than I am so now I have to decide what I want to counter with. And I can look here and I see I, I've got a card here. And I, I can click it to see what it is. And so this will um, hurt the siege line. And this one will hurt the close combat line. So I have one. So I can line up in here and know that... It, I don't really have a, a weather card that could help me here. So it's probably where I might build up at. So let's drop our least powerful one in here. Okay, so you can see that part of the strategy is going to be that if you get too extended in any one line, then it's going to be uh, more advantageous for your opponent to play a card if they happen to have one so we're even right now and I know I can't win if I pass really he'll just add one more um, let's go ahead with our other weakest siege unit here so we'll have one in each column I don't know if that's a good strategy or not to spread out this much it only puts us up one more and he just uh, put down a uh, card that has like, uh, um, if I can examine that card. I won't let me examine that card. It'd be nice if they'd let me examine it. But basically, he's buffing him in some way. <laughs> and then, um, but what we can do is we can weaken this line and bring them all down to one. Um, and so that would give us a a strength there so let's try that just to see how that would look let's see if that's the right one okay that is the close combat one and so you'll notice but it's also going to take away well it won't take away from us because our guy is already just a one so I'm gonna go here and it's uh, basically cuts his power in half now um, The question is, do I let him go? He's not that far ahead of me. And it, one of the things about this is it seems like the computer plays a pretty darn good game. Um, let's just go ahead now and play this card here. This gives us a really strong middle. And see, it. we're kind of baiting him, hoping maybe he, if he is going to play a middle ground, and he did, he played a middle ground. But look, I'm, oh, now, see, that dropped me way, 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 way down. So that, in some ways, was a very poor strategic move for me. Um, the question is how to win the next round. You know, that's always the problem with this um, way to go. So I could pass and let him have this um, and um, it was probably weak of me to uh, ante up so much in that middle position um, so I could try to win it with this one in the back row and I am gonna do that I'm just gonna see what would happen if I go for broke on this first round and really try to take this first round from him does he just keep, he's throwing just more and more. Wow, we got drenched all the way through. So now there is a clearer uh, card that would clear it out, but we don't have one. 
Um, and so all these that we put down are only worth one in this. So I'm going to pass, and he'll have to come up with at least two more cards. He's going to have to throw at this. So I might win this. If he, if he keeps... Uh, and you have to hold the Y down to pass. Hold your button down a little while to pass. Let's see if he folds or, or Annie's up more cards. Because he's got to keep going. Oh, he did. Okay, so he kept throwing down more cards. And so he won that round, but... I, I wonder how many cards does he have left? He's only got two cards left. And I got four. So I'm coming into this with a bit of an advantage. See, I, only, I know now he's only got one card left. So I can play this one. And now he either can beat me or he has to pass. That was the only card he had, so he has to pass. And I, my turn. I can pass, and I win. So I'm holding down Y, and I pass, and I win. And now, um, because I think he's hurting, I got to get to a card. I got a special realm bonus because of my deck. I got an extra card. So I can just play whatever I want here. And he has no cards. So he's going to have to pass. And I can pass. So I won that round, which means I win the match. So now, that was classic. Um, I probably could have explained it better. There were probably little places in there that... Um, were uh, confusing but what you saw was how this game strategically works is that he at the end had uh, dropped those environmental um, cards to the point you know I dropped one but he dropped two more so that any cards he had to play two full cards to win that round and get ahead of me and because he had to win place those cards he, he used them up in his deck and he had nothing left for round two and three and I basically easily won round two and three because he didn't have any cards that could really uh, uh, give him a win so let's see what we get for this win and um, you'll notice too that um, I didn't have to play my uh, I had a special card I could play my leadership card that I didn't play my hero card so now it shows that we can acquire more powerful cards too and so there, that was the end result. The first round got tied, which I assume uh, we both lose, I think. It's the way it works. Um, and then I won the second two. Or he won them, I guess, I don't, because I went first. I'm not sure. All right, well, so. Well, you have a knack for this game. If you ever find yourself in Oxenfurt and wish to play a true master, ask for Stefan. A simple innkeep by trade, but a true maestro when it comes to Gwent. I'll remember that. Thanks. Always seem to like it a little more when you win. Um, that was really... I've won maybe one other game, and it felt like luck more. That time was actually a time where I really felt like I was starting to get a little bit more strategic with it. But overall, I'm still going to say, as far as from the review part of get this game... It's probably still just basically a B, good, maybe. I'm not going to give that game an A yet until I've played a little bit more, but starting to like it a little bit better. So um, I talked through that last quest that came up so we can see kind of what is available by going here. So we have our complete the Griffin contract, and then we have talk to Vesemir. So in some ways these are connected. In other words, we're going to talk to Vesemir to then set the trap, because um, it's all this done and once we're done then we'll have completed the Griffin contract. Now if we go down to secondary quest here we have on death's bed brew a, a, a dose of the swallow potion. Now this sounds like, see this was a secondary quest. Remember when that woman was dying we um, said we could probably help her, and she said, do as you wish on that. Well, let's see what that would take. Um, that we have to, um, you know, help her here. So, but I'm actually going to end this this episode, make it kind of a short one, because I want to make it more about Gwent. I apologize if that's the only reason you watched it, and I've already started to move on, because this is a... a 
overall, you know, each episode is a uh, a gameplay walkthrough. You know, I intend to take, uh, you know, um, take this all the way, and you know, as far as it's enjoyable to keep playing it, and and uh, you know, explain the game, let people figure it out, and also give my review on it. And overall, you know, really liking the game, the card game we just played. I enjoyed that. That was a good card game, and um, hopefully. Uh, if it's just your first time watching a Gwent game or seeing how that that would work, hopefully that you found uh, that at least a little bit helpful. I don't uh, intend to spend a lot of time playing that mini game, but maybe we'll throw a few more in as we go along. Obviously, if you really like this and you're wanting to see more of it, you know, message me or um, you know, and it really does help when you subscribe. So, thanks for watching.